Welcome everyone, my name is Zan Ta and today's presentation is on Autodesk Revit Server. This will be a quick introduction and let's get started. So our agenda is to get a little bit of information about repo products and who we are as a company. We'll then focus in on the subject matter, Autodesk Revit Server. We'll look at what it is, why do we use it, how does it work, what are the system requirements, and the pros and cons. Finally, we'll actually go into a call of action. For those of you who may not be aware, Repo Products has been around for well over 35 years. We are multiple resellers for Autodesk products, Canon, Kip, Xerox, and so on. Our company is quite diversified. We have a full printing production environment. We sell and support all of the printers, plotters, multifunctioning devices, wide format devices. We also have an Autodesk software division that sells and supports all of the Autodesk products, such as AutoCAD, Revit, Navisworks, Civil 3D. We also have a, a reality capture division that works with Faro and laser scanning technology. And that's just a small sampling of what we do. We also have a um, sister site called the Color Spot, and they do vehicle wrapping, signage, wayfaring, things like that. So for those of you who are local, uh, please come by and take a tour of the building. You can ask anybody to stop what they're doing and they'll show you around. So let's look at the subject matter, Revit Server. So what is Revit Server? Revit Server gives us the ability to use the work sharing functionality within native Revit, uh, not just on a local area network environment, but now on a wide area network environment. So the traditional workflow would be we have multiple users in an office environment and they do their work. They collaborate with each other on a single Revit model and they call it a day. Well, what happens if your office has multiple locations? We can actually use Revit Server to help cache and implement this workflow across multiple locations, across multiple users on a single Revit model. So why do we use it? <clears throat> There are situations where the company, because we have so many locations, they have issues with trying to find a single location to place that central model and having to worry about things like VPN access and controlling the uh, access of that model across the WAN. So um, using Revit Server will allow for this and help facilitate it quickly and easily. So how does it work? There are actually several server roles, if you will, you have host, accelerator, admin. Host is the one that actually contains the master central model. An accelerator Revit server will allow for caching of the central model as a local copy. The admin role allows you to look at the admin console page and control and manage the central models. We do need to make sure that those environment variables are set up for host, accelerator, and admin, and they are in English. So how does it work for the end users? Any information that's in the master central model gets sent across the WAN <clears throat> to all the other Revit server accelerators. That cached information is held there. And when an end user is using a local model and says, save the model, they're saving their data to their local Revit model. No different than the typical approach. When they hit save the central, their changed data goes directly to the central model. Any cached changed data that they don't have since the last save to central is actually coming from the local closest Revit server accelerator. And this just allows for the data to be transferred faster. That information from the master central model to the Revit server accelerators is cached every two minutes. So when we take a look at the aspects of how it works. For the end users, you'll see when they click the open dialog box, uh, you'll see Revit Server as an icon in the, in the left panel. <clears throat> you can browse to that particular uh, Revit Server and browse to your particular central model. When you're setting up Revit Server, there will be a Manage Connections uh, window that you'll have to set up initially so that the Revit session on that local workstation can see that accelerator. 
And again, we said earlier, you have to set up the environment variables for the particular role for that Revit server. From the admin BIM uh, manager standpoint, you'll have the admin console. So this is what the admin console looks like. You have the ability to create files and create folders and place all your central models within as many subfolders as you need. You can uh, delete any of it. You can cut, copy, and paste, and you can lock the model for the purposes of backing up. When we take a look at the system requirements, um, we need to make sure that it's a server operating system, Windows Server 2008 R2 or higher, 2012, 2012 R2. And there are different levels of what Autodesk states as being a minimum, a value, and a performance level. And as you can see here in the chart, the requirements are not that intensive. Let's look at the pros and cons of using Revit Server. Uh, number one, it gives you faster save to central times <clears throat> and faster retrieval of changed data. The central model, uh, model is actually replicated across your wide area network because you're doing actual Revit Server accelerators. So should the master central model go down, you can actually promote a Revit Server Accelerator as the host. <clears throat> you can control the location of all those local models and the Revit Server Accelerators. And then, unfortunately, there are a lot of negative aspects to the software as well. So this is strictly meant to be a single domain use only, a single office. And what that means is that, uh, let's say you're an architecture office with four locations, all within the same domain, you can use Revit Server. If you have a engineer um, that needs to tap in and work with you in the same fashion, that, per that person cannot do that. Um, you cannot create a local file using Windows Explorer. You'll have to use it via the open dialog box with a check mark where it says create new local. Uh, you cannot use work share monitoring. And working at risk is not feasible. Typically working at risk isn't something we want to do anyway. There is no right-click capability in the open dialog box for Revit Server. And again, these uh, negative aspects may change down the road, but this is as it stands from Revit Server 2015 moving up. Folder management has to be done within the Revit Server Administrator. And obviously, you cannot overwrite the central model with the same name. And then backing up the central model will require some basic IT um, protocols. And that's it. That's a quick presentation on Revit Server. And for those who are interested in it, please give us a call or contact your account representative at Repo Products, and they can help you out. Thank you very much for watching.